All right, guys, so uh, I'm going to make this as basically a separate video um, away from the rest of the Chevelle and whatnot. That way I can kind of explain to you guys um, how I made a few things and how to make a few things. If you're working in the same situation as I am in the sense that you don't have all all the tools you need like dimple dies and or metal shrinkers or stretchers and you know yada, 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 all that really nice, fancy, high-dollar, expensive stuff that... Uh, <laughs> a lot of us can't usually afford when we've got a lot going on like this build for the Chevelle. So first thing I'm going to kind of touch base with you guys on. Here for the wheel well arch. Now, the rest of the wheel well is fine. And it doesn't need to be replaced, but this area right here, right in the corner, the edge of it, whatever you want to call it, is toast. Um, so I'm going to probably cut it out from about right here. Um, since I don't have, like I said, any of the, the cool machines and tools to roll or stretch or form metal that way, I'm going to have to do this in two pieces. Uh, so the outside edge slash lip will be one piece and then the inside if you guys can kind of see here or not how it it's got a pretty straight bend here and then it folds back out and then goes into that panel um, is gonna make this kind of a different little bit of a bend <clears throat> um, I'll kind of go step by step with you guys as to what I'm doing and how I do it uh, and it gives you, you guys, guys can kind of see what I'm talking yeah. about here it it had three different curves in it basically you know you had your outside piece which is relatively flat and then you had your, your inside piece that did um, <clears throat> about two different turns. One from the outside piece coming in and then another one that is pretty much flat all the way in. And that's what your, uh, your quarter panel actually spot welds to. So I had to completely rebuild that. And I did it, in, like I said, two pieces. Um, and once I get all these little tack welds ground down, you won't even really notice that it was replaced. So I'm going to show you how to make that. And then I'm also going to show you how to make these uh, rear lower window channel corners. Um, there's two or three different ways I've seen these done. Um, if you're kind of working with some of the stuff I have to work with or in the same kind of conditions that I need to work with things, then, you know, this is something probably really help you out in the long run. Um, here are the two pieces I got cut that I need uh, <clears throat> for that wheel well arch. Now... When you do this, you might want to make a template for your outside piece, that outside part of the lip, uh, that, so you can get the contour right and everything. Um, now, since I've made an arch like this, this is what's going to happen with this one. But first, you guys can see the center line right down the middle of the piece of metal I got cut out. Now, what's going to happen here is you're going to have to throw it in a vise, and we're going to have to bend it over and basically make an angle out of it. Um, so, this is... Uh, Kind of a slow process you got to start at one end and kind of work your way down uh, you can do it with a piece of angle iron uh, the only bad thing about doing that is the angle irons usually got a little bit of a round spot on it um, right in the corner basically or right in the center of it i guess uh, you don't really want that so you're going to want to put it in a good vice that's got a pretty flat edge to it so when you pound it down and you kind of get that squared into it because it... all right when you do this guys you're going to want to get your piece of steel in here a little bit higher than the actual line depending on which way you're going to bend it that way when it folds over you don't kind of get off of the center a little bit um i've got my line i've got <clears throat> i've got the uh the vice clamped up in here just below the line so it's just about even with it maybe a little less so when i fold it over to kind of go right where it needs to probably going to use a mixture of a regular hammer and a rubber mallet to get this out now after i start kind of folding it i'll have to slide the piece back along the way and continue to hammer it in so it doesn't get a real uneven crinkle in it
All right, guys, so I've got this bent about where I need it. I can bend it a little more if I need to. Uh, I'm going to run with that for now and see about where that fits. Now, this is what you're going to have to do to get that kind of round effect to fit in here. Um, basically, we got to take this to this. Um, so the flat piece, which is going to be the inside piece, so it actually run about like that you're gonna leave alone so you're gonna take the outside edging of this and notch it like and then you'll you'll start bending it you'll bend that whole piece in here uh, and you'll you'll go down until you get it all fitted you know so it's it's a kind of a back and forth thing to get that bend that you need to match with this uh, and that's the exact same way that i made the corner pieces for um the the rear window channel on the Chevelle. Um, I made basically an angle out of regular old uh, sheet metal. And then I put, oh, probably two or three different notches. One right in here, one right in the middle, and then one out on the other edge. Uh, actually, <clears throat> and then went ahead and started bending it in until it matched this curve. Now you may have to make another notch or make a notch a little bigger or something along the lines, but once you match this curve, you're going to take it and weld up that notch. But that's the same thing we're going to do with this, and it's actually going to be reversed from what the window channel corners were, because instead of coming in, we're going out. So I'll wind up just having to do a straight cut and then bend it out. So This is what I was talking about the notches guys so if, if you were doing like what I did on the window channel you would actually make these into little bees um, that way it can bend inward now since this is going outward all you got to do is just little quick cuts and that way when you bend it out it starts making that form All right, awesome, that's gonna work. So so what I'm gonna do is I'll cut this piece out right in here where I need to cut it out all the way to the back, and I'll weld in the top piece first. Now since this has got a little bit of a different curve once it hits this point, it starts rolling back in. I actually left the bottom piece of that outside of the lip a little wider. And then what I'll do is I'll basically weld it up here to the original paneling and the new lip, and then I'll just tack it in place right in between all the um, the little cuts and that way it's easier for me to go ahead and form it into place now see this is all bent up in here and it's not as round as it needs to be so I couldn't really go off of that as an example as to where I need it um, so it'd be better to do it kind of in the progress of welding it all up um, <clears throat> the other thing is since since I didn't have to V-cut these out and I just had to notch them, they're not that wide. It'd be pretty easy for me to go in there and put a filler piece behind it and just fill them in. So that's not a big deal. Um, like I said, I'll tack in between each one as I as I form it back to this piece. All right, guys, there's that piece. So all tacked in all the way down, and you can kind of see how I made it the two pieces. And this is what I meant by kind of going in between. Uh, the cuts here uh, now all you really got to do is take a piece of aluminum or copper or something put back in here and fill in these uh, these splits um, but otherwise it's pretty easy pretty straightforward that's not difficult at all um, like I said I'd prefer to go with two pieces instead of trying to do one and you can bend and shape that metal any way you need to this way with the two different pieces um, so you know if you're if you're uh, in a position where you need to make something like this, don't be afraid to try something along these lines. Because like I said, it's really not as hard as it seems. Um, working with metal and welding is actually relatively easy depending on what you're doing. And in my experience, it's it, when you don't have the tools and all the things that you need to make something, you kind of 
you know, you, you feel like maybe you should hold off or that you don't really want to take it on. But growing up without a lot of the, the proper things to make or use to, to work on stuff like this has taught me a lot in my life. And one of those things is basically using unconventional things to make a very conventional thing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know, find little things around the house or just little bits and pieces of things you have here. Practice with it. Try it. And you might be able to make exactly what you need with what you got. I found this to be the easiest after doing this two, three, four, five different times on different vehicles. Um, you, you can take two separate pieces for such as like the window channel corner here and weld them together. Uh, you know, you can make your round piece and then you can take a flat piece of steel about the, the width you need and then round it and then weld them together. Of course, that's a lot of extra welding and extra grinding. Um, so to kind of eliminate some of that, we did this in one piece here. Um, basically, you just kind of shape your metal into an angle and then put some V-cuts in it. And I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. This is kind of your little basic angle made out of regular sheet metal. You know, put it in a vise and fold it over, basically. Uh, so, um, what you really kind of need to do, since this is basically the reverse of doing um, the outer wheel well lip, is instead of doing just straight notches to fold it outward, you're going to put little V-cuts in it to fold it inward. Um, so, I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. So, just like that. Um, you may have to put two, three, or four in there depending on the size of your piece. So what you'll do is you'll get it up in here and you'll kind of bend the piece until you start getting the shape you want. Um, and you'll start closing up that gap in there as you can see. But anyway guys, like I said, you have to put anywhere from two or four of these notches in uh, one of these angle pieces for your corners to kind of get that, um, that roundness that you want or that radius that you're looking for. Um, the next thing to mention... Uh, when you do this and you get uh, the rounded edge or corner or anything that you want done or made, you need to probably go ahead and weld that notch up prior to putting it in there. It'll save you a lot of time, work, and effort trying to get in there to, to grind it out and get it smooth. Um, and that way you can make sure you get both sides welded up real nice and, and just get a, a better result out of it. But anyway, guys, that's how I made the... Uh, the rear lower window channel corners for the Chevelle um, basically be used on pretty much any application for these old cars and that seems to be one of the biggest rust problem areas on these older cars is when they rust out in the rear window channel areas it tends to be in that corner um, it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward there's not a lot of work to it you just cut out your piece the size you need and the length you need um, I would keep it a little longer and you can adjust the uh, the size when you get ready to put it in. Um, some people like to overlap them and obviously when you make that bend you're gonna have your corners or something be a little bit off and it's always better to have a little extra uh, metal on the end there so when you do that <laughs> you don't come up short and have to make another piece. <clears throat> but anyway guys I'm gonna basically shut this video down but for the next how-to video I'm gonna basically show you how to make what I would consider the poor man's dimple die holes um, that you can use for gussets or paneling or anything else. Uh, get, dimple dies are pretty expensive and I mean they make a couple different versions. One of them comes with a bolt to tighten it up and put that dimple in it. Um, from what I've heard that they don't really usually last too long and they're still a little bit on the pricey side especially if you need multiple sized holes so i'm going to show you guys how i did these in the next video um it's pretty pretty easy it's not too time consuming and that might actually help some of you guys out if you're looking for that same look and that same style or that that kind of gusset or whatever you're wanting out of that um so that's something to look forward to here later on down the road